And now an update on the E3D tool changer. Before we get started, if you don't know what the E3D tool changer is, let's get you up to speed. The tool changer is not a 3D printer. It's a tool changing machine that just happens to be able to 3D print. The motion system has four docks that you can use for whatever four tools you wish. And in its default configuration, it has four ports in the back where you can put extruder motors and you can feed your hot ends with a Bowden tube. Now I purchased the tool changer mainly as a learning experience. I wanted to see how the whole thing was gonna work and I wanted to be part of the evolving tool changer ecosystem. Now the tool changer is mostly sold as just a motion system, but you can order additional parts to configure it how you wish. I did order mine with four 3D printing heads. So mine has four V6 hot ends. You do get the carriages for the tool heads when you order the motion system. I also got four Titan extruders that feed all of the V6 hot ends with a Bowden tube. And that's probably one of the first things that I would have done differently had I known how this whole thing was gonna work out. I also got a Duet Wi-Fi 2 and the Duex board to allow more stepper drivers. And E3D does provide the firmware configured somewhat for the tool changer for the Duet boards. Now in all honesty, the tool changer has been nothing but a struggle, but I kind of figured that's how things were gonna go. This is really sold as a project, not something that's gonna work right out of the box, because you can custom configure it however you wish. The first thing that was kind of eye-opening was how much of the code you would have to tweak to even get it to be able to pick up the tools successfully every time. Now, if you've never messed with RipRat firmware or a Duet board, this is the default web interface that comes on the Duet. It's very handy and straightforward for using your printer and dealing with G-code files, but you can also configure macros that let you execute different G-code commands, and you have to remember how RipRap firmware works. Nowadays that the Duet company has kind of commandeered the RipRap firmware project, you're gonna download a firmware that's configured for that board, flash it to the board, and then control the firmware from there on out with G-code commands. So for instance, if we go into Settings, System Editor, we can take a look at config.g. So the RipRap firmware that lives on your board is very generic by default, and then you'd customize how your printer reacts to things in here. You can see there's just a bunch of different G-code commands that tell your printer how to react to things. And down here at the bottom, you have the tool offset section. Since no tool head or machine part will have the exact same tolerance, you're gonna have to adjust them in tool offsets. If you've ever messed with a multi-extruder 3D printer, you'll know how challenging sometimes this can be. But when you have four tool heads, you have four times the headache. So you have to go around and adjust each one of these based on a calibration print. This is what will allow you to adjust each tool head's height from the bed surface, as well as how all the tools are gonna to interact with each other while doing multicolor or multi-material prints. So that's one hurdle. And down here you have config files on what it has to do to go get a tool, pick it up, and put it back. So for instance, in the T pre zero, that's for tool zero, you're gonna to have to tell it how to go get that tool and where it is. And that's where the next instance of customizing comes in. You have to tell it exactly where to go collect that tool so it doesn't collide with anything. Again, the motion system is very structurally sound, but not everything is going to be exactly perfect. So here's where you will adjust how the machine can go pick up that tool. In the T free zero, again, tool zero, these are the steps that it's going to take when it goes to put the tool back. It divides the movement of Y up so it goes in slower. This last line is how it actually drops off the tool on the magnet on the dock and what it does after it's parked that tool. And then in your post script, that's where you'll put up all the cleanup effort. Turn your heaters off, turn off mesh leveling, and so on. And it's not just configuration items inside the Duet software. You also have to consider your slicer. I use Prusa Slicer for the most part, so I've done all my tweaking in here. But if we go into printer settings and we take a look at the custom G code, I've added a whole lot of items to before layer change to try to decide which part fan to turn on when. You don't want it for your first layer, but you want it full blast for all the other ones when using PLA. You have to get kind of created with code down here to figure out what layer number that is and which fan to turn on. Also in the tool change G code, what happens when you change out a tool? You want to keep that previous tool hot so you don't have to wait for it to heat up again, but you don't want it to ooze. Also, you have to go through some sort of purge or brushing sequence. Just in case there's a little bit of material that's oozed out, you can clean it off before you start printing. 
Also, sometimes you'll just have to force a purge or a retract to make sure the filament is ready to print. There's a whole lot of different things that you need to configure and decide before you'll get a working tool changer set up. And that's just a taste of the things that I had to tweak to get it working as a tool changing machine. I really haven't even got to the print settings yet. It will print, but the quality isn't great. And that's where I would do things a little bit differently if I were to do this again. So let's get back to the Titan extruder. Now in the past, I've had pretty good luck with the Titan as a direct drive extruder. No issues at all. But in this Bowden setup where you're pulling filament from the bottom through a pretty long tube, and then you're sending it through an 800 millimeter tube to get to the hot end, it just doesn't work very well. Because of the length of the tube, your retraction lengths are going to have to be pretty high and fairly quick, and it has a tendency to strip the filament. And the layer consistency just isn't what it should be. So if I knew then what I know now, that's definitely something that I would change up. Maybe I'd go ahead and get one of the Titan extruders, but then I'd want to try a few others, including some of the direct drive systems that the community has created for the tool changing platform. And that's a direction I'm definitely going to go in in the future. And there are a few other disappointments that I had with the tool changer system. One of the biggest ones being almost every corner of the acrylic casing that's around the aluminum extrusion is broken. And I know what you're thinking, I tightened those screws too much and it cracked the acrylic, but I really didn't. These are all just hand tight. In fact, you can spin them off with your fingers. After moving the tool changer around a little bit, I noticed they started to crack, and I'm actually getting ready to start losing a few pieces of it. So there's definitely a better solution for this out there. I just had to figure out what that is. Also, as far as the brush goes, over on the E3D forums, a lot of people were using a silicone brush. So I got one and cut it down, and it has been working pretty well so far. And the Bowden tube that I ordered from E3D. It just wasn't quite the right tolerance for the filament that I was using. It was just a bit too tight. So I switched out to all Capricorn, and that has seemed to correct a lot of issues with the extruder drives. Still somewhat sloppy, but definitely better. So if I had to do it all over again, would I still buy the E3D tool changer? Absolutely. I think it's a great opportunity, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with this thing in the future. Now would I tell you to buy a tool changer? Probably not. 95% of the people that 3D print aren't going to be willing to do all the hacking and tweaking that it's going to take to get this thing working correctly. But if you are looking at the tool changer, I recommend you get into it slow. Don't jump in with both feet. Maybe just buy the motion system, then decide from there how you'd like to custom build the machine. It makes a lot more sense when you're in front of it and you can see how this whole thing's gonna work. And that's what I hope this video, as well as the following content on the tool changer, will help you do as you wanna build your system. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.